So for these last couple of things, I added these two elements at the bottom of my HTML. I added one input that's wired up with an on change listener. So this is a new event that we haven't used yet. Um, so my on change is going to say call this function text input changed, which I created right here. Text input changed, and um, underneath it is just a div that says sign the guest book. So uh, this parameter right here, it's a you know, when you pass parameters, you usually want to use meaningful names, not like X. That was a, a bad idea, but so um, it's going to pass that, and then it's going to make an alert and say, hey, this object that you just uh, changed, changed. So um, refresh the page, come down here, do a little typing, and then as soon as I focus out of this text box, Bing is going to say, hey, that HTML input element changed. So that kind of lays the groundwork for what I wanted to show you here. Um, so there's a couple things. Um, First, uh, the, the, there's actually three points that I'm making. One of them is not that conceptual, and the other ones are, are more conceptual. So let's let's do the non-conceptual one first. So if at the very, um, let's do this. If I make a variable here inside of text input change, and I say um, var, let's actually use what we have up here. So I want to get the whole page. Var page equals, and this is going to be about me. Because if you remember, you don't have to remember, it's right here. Um, I wrapped all of my um, HTML content in this about me div. So all of these things that are direct children, h1, h2, h3, this div, this div, this div, every single one of these direct children, if I want to remove them from the page, like when you do this, and I let's say I went to the float image, and I opened that up, and then the image right there, if I right clicked on it and I said, um, where is it? Delete node, bing, and now it's gone, right? So if I want to do that programmatically in JavaScript, um, I have to have I have to have access to the parent so that I can remove the child. So what I can do here is I can say, okay, I've grabbed the page, and now I want to say page dot remove child input. Let me get rid of that too. Oh, well, there's one thing that I forgot that get elements by class name actually returns a collection. And that collection needs to be indexed. So this is the, that's the first position in the index. So now that's the page. So the page now I should be able to remove the child input. So I'll come back here, refresh the page, do some modifications. And now when I click over here somewhere, the text box should go away. So good. So that was the first thing that I wanted to show you how to actually remove elements programmatically. Uh, these last couple things are a little more um, conceptual, uh, philosophical, I guess not quite philosophical. So one thing about JavaScript that's really cool is it's a dynamic language. Um, that means it's not strongly typed. So your objects, even if you haven't defined uh, methods or properties on them, you can still add them. So you can do things like this. You can say, oh, I'm going to declare this variable called, you know, whatever. I'll just call it dynamic object because that's what it's exemplifying. So when you say open open curly brace and curly brace, that's creating a completely empty object. So this object has nothing on it. So demonstrating the dynamic nature of JavaScript is just doing things like this. You can say dynamic object dot name equals you know anything. You can say dynamic object dot um, size equals you know whatever you can keep just throwing on these attributes over and over and over again. So that's pretty cool. What I want to do is um, you know, just e show you that even once you just throw one of these properties on there, you can use it later to do something. Uh, it might not seem that useful right now, but once we get into um, you know, JSON and being able to serialize these big nodes of uh, information into these dynamic objects, it's going to get really important and really useful. So it's, it's important just to learn the dynamic nature of the language. So I'm going to say dynamic object dot, um, I'll just call it thank you text equals thank you. So notice I don't really have, you know, all these things aren't really scoped at all. They're just, you know, in here in this file. So right when the page loads, it's going to declare this variable and have it available all throughout this scope here. So what I want to do is after I change the, the text, I also want to grab that other div that I put next to it. Where is it? This one, the one that says sign the guest book. And I want to change that to uh, say thank you.
And I guess the fastest way that I can think of is just to throw a class on it. If you haven't figured it out yet, using classes is pretty much you know the, the way that you access things both in CSS and in JavaScript and jQuery for the most part. I'm just going to call this the footer. Nice easy name, impossible to forget. So I'm going to go into my styles. I'm going to add a new class called footer. I guess I should put it with these other classes. Oops, I'll just say about me footer. And you know, I'm not I actually I'm not really sure I need to style it at all, but you know, I'll just put it in there just for posterity's sake. And um, so now I kind of have access to to get at it. And I go back into my JavaScript and I can say you know I can basically put another line just like that. It says, hey, get me the footer. And the footer is going to be has the class name footer, and it's gonna it's still the zeroth element in the list. And uh, you know what I want to do now is I want to change what the text says. So after I remove the input from the screen, I want to change the text of the footer. And we already saw how to do that before. You just say enter HTML equals uh, whatever you want. So this is the interesting part is that I can actually grab the dynamic object and say you know use the thank you text. So here's the difference, you know, in a strongly typed language, it would, you know, you would say dynamic object dot and it would list all of the things that the class or, or you know, the template said that it had. And here, uh, you know, it really, it doesn't check that. It lets you try to call whatever you want, you know, any function, any property name, and it checks during runtime to see if that thing is actually there. That's what it means to be a dynamic language. So it's going to be like, oh, let's look for something called thank you text. And it's going to find it because I, I stuck it on the object right there. So that's kind of like the interesting aspect of you know dynamic languages, not just JavaScript. But so as soon as I ch change this, it should say thank you, and it does. So it's pretty cool. We can actually watch it happen in the DOM if we if we care. Refresh the screen. Come down here. We see the input. We see the div, and you will see that go away and that change text. As soon as we go out of here, and they're gone, and that one says thank you. Okay. So the last thing I want to talk about is just to point out the fact that JavaScript uh, supports first class functions. What that means is that you can uh, define a function and store it in a variable and pass it around as a reference. So you can do some pretty crazy things with, with first class functions. Um, you know, I'm going to give you an example that doesn't really do a whole lot in, in this example, but um, you know, it'll at least show you kind of the, the capabilities and the power of the abstraction. I could do something like um, you know, I can make a method or a function that says uh, invoke this function and it takes some function f and then it just says you know what whatever whatever you just gave me just call it so this is a totally useless example but I think you know it's a good first first example of what a first class function is because you can see that you know this normally would look like uh, you know to a new program or just a variable not a function but you can see that JavaScript will allow you to do this, and by you know by doing that, it's going to say, oh, okay, then that parameter that you gave me must be a function, and I'm going to try to invoke it. So that's that's the power of first class functions is it allows you to do stuff like this. So while this in and of itself is useless, it does demonstrate what is a first class function and how can you use it um, to abstract away some logic. Um, and of course, abstraction with ab more abstraction comes uh, more power. So. Um, I'm going to use kind of this and uh, retrofit my current code into that. So what I'm going to do is, uh, how about this? How about I say um, I'm going to create a variable called my function. I'll say it's a function. I'm going to define it right in line right there. I'm going to take all the code I had before. I'm going to put it inside of this function definition. So now, instead of before, where I said, okay, what does this function do? It does instruction one, two, and three, and four. Instead, I've said it creates this variable, and that variable is a function. And that function that's inside of this variable right here has all the code. So this alone right here, what I've done right there, that won't do anything except define a function and store it in this variable. So if I want to actually you know, call it, I would have to say, oh, my function and now I want to invoke it, right? So um, 
actually I have to pass along that input parameter because it's gonna, if not, it's not going to know what that is. So now I have to actually invoke it. So here's defining a function. And normally, uh, this is right here is what you know shows you first class functions are supported. It takes this function, it turns it into an object, and stores it in this reference here. And now down here, I can call it my function invoke. So th it shouldn't change the behavior at all, but it does show you kind of the power of JavaScript. So, and furthermore, if I want to use this weird thing that I did up there, instead of instead of saying my function dot go, I can literally say invoke this function and I can pass along a reference to my function. That should work too. And it does. So this kind of shows you, um, you know, what you can do with, with uh, first class functions. And, you know, again, you know, you might say something like, oh, well, why would I want to put this function in a variable? Um, well, because variables can change. And you can take a variable and you can say, well, right now I'm pointing at this function, but later on I changed my mind and now I'm pointing to that function. And you know you can you can take a singular variable and you know have it point to different things based on a piece of data. You know, so the server might come back and you know to a request and say, oh, here the value is one, or now it's two, or now it's three. And based on you know the data or information, you can you know change the behavior of a single variable without having to say, you know, if if one do run this function, else if two run this function, else if three run this function. You really don't want to have to do that. Instead, you can just say, you know, there's a this is a variable, and it's pointing to some function, and it'll be pointing. It'll just always be pointing to the right function. So I know that's kind of vague, but without like a, a, a bigger application with complex requirements, it won't be totally clear. I just wanted to you know mention that, that this was you know an aspect of the language. So when we get into, you know, we're going to get into more complex things that we're going to implement, but I think, you know, this kind of closes off the very basics, what I would consider the basics of JavaScript and what you can do with it. So with that, um, I'm going to, my next step is I'm going to decide where to go from here. I've now introduced the three layers, uh, the behavior layer, JavaScript, the style layer, CSS, and the content layer, HTML. Uh, so with that, you now kind of have a, a good idea of, um, you know what the three layers of the front end are, and from here I kind of have to uh, figure out what's the next, what's the best thing to t to kind of introduce next and talk about. So obviously it'll be a combination of all three and start to get uh, into more advanced topics. All right, 